दीनवागपते गोपीशकमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषवानुसते देवी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा कृष्ण हरे 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 understand hindi or not main gujarati main hindi samajhte hain main gujarati bolu nahi i can try and speak gujarati if you want kem se saadhu se ek mere liye ke wale harmonium andar rakh do theek se rakh do harmonium put the harmonium inside dekho pehle main ye suna first i will say tum baat karoge to to kaise hoga sab to karoge वन सेंट घूमते घूमते एक गांव में कहां पहुंचे सो सेंट वाज वन टाइम उस गांव के बीच में he uh, wants to increase the village and santo aapko park mein ja ke baithe bhajan karne ke liye dekho us park ko the bagicha mein so in that park there was a tree one ko jo hai pakshi jo hai pakshi kya karta hai what does a bird do there was bird in village and in the early morning the bird flies away to find food aur phir sham ke samay and in the evening subah se lekar ke sham tak apne apne ghar mein so from morning to evening the bird keeps on searching for the food aakar ke us park mein us pair par jo hai baithte apne ghosla bhi bana le ने में गिर गया उसने दो चार भी आ भी नहीं भी आती क्योंकि कई बार सो फ्यू बर्ड्स डोंट कम बैक बिकॉज़ दे गेट ट्रैप्ड इन माय हंट और देखो सारे रात वो चिड़िया जो है है चीची चीची की करते अपने पूंछ में चोंच लगा देती है अपने आप बात करते हैं संत महात्मा उस पेड़ के नीचे बैठे और और भजन करने लगे। ने 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 the bird drops the poop on the saint but still the saint does not say anything 
So here, so here, there's a bird on the bird on the top of the tree, and we clap our hands so the bird flies away, because the bird will drop food on us and our clothes will get dirty. But the saint didn't say anything. So all the birds they came in front of the saint. He said, "Oh Maharaj, <coughs> we disturb you a lot in your austerities, but you still don't say anything. Please give us some advice what to do." <coughs> the saint said, "You are bird. Your bird family. Your nature is." What to do? It's your nature to do make sound like Jiji Jiji. And I am the saint. My nature is to chant three names and do bhajan. They say no, saint. Give us diksha mantras. Then the saint said, Our mantra is very small. Just remember it. He said, Higlin. So one day a hunter will come. One day a hunter will come. So this is the mantra that he gave. One day a hunter will come, and he will offer you some grains of food. One day a hunter will come, and he will offer you some grains of food. And he will lay down a trap. To, will lay down a trap to catch you. And the fourth line is: so Don't be greedy and get trapped. So these are the four sentences. One day a hunter will come. That's the first line. And he will offer you some grains of food. And he will lay down a trap. That's the third line. And the fourth line: Don't be greedy and get trapped in it. Guru Dev gave mantras. It depends on the disciples if they want to remember the meaning of the mantra or not. So some people chant the mantra and some people don't. They take mantra from the Guru. Everyone takes mantra from the Guru. They take initiation diksha. In very limited people, they chant the mantras properly. Sometimes they don't chant with their heart, and sometimes they chant it half. They don't do it properly. So they are sitting and chanting holy names, and they see someone is bringing the food, and say they should two finger give me two chapatis. And some people chant with their open eyes, and some people chant with their closed eyes. If your eyes are closed, then you want to sleep. And if we are open our eyes, we see, keep seeing everything around us. So this is true or not? So the pure devotee and the saint, he gave these four sentences to the birds, and he went away. And few birds they were chanting this name, and the few birds were not. So one and two years passed by, and one day, in reality, a hunter came in the forest, in the garden. So the hunter came in the vicinity and offered some grains of food, and he laid down a trap on the top of it. And all the birds they saw that this very morning, oh, they are very beautiful food. It's like basmati rice, very nice grace. It's like very looks like a pearl. It's like very beautiful, beautiful rice. All the birds said, today we don't have to go and search for any food. We don't have to travel. We don't have to search for food. Lord has arranged everything. He has arranged so beautiful rice, looking like pearl, basmati rice for us. <coughs> we don't have to struggle today. So all the birds got so happy, and all the birds they came down from upside and they started to eat that rice. Cut, 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 cut. And they started to eat. So ch the birds don't eat fast. First, they take it through their pecs and store it in their throat. So if you touch the throat of the bird, you can feel the rice in there. So they collect everything as soon as they can. And all the birds, all the birds, they were eating, and the hunter saw them. And he had made a trap with a rope. He pulled the rope, and when he pulled the rope. 
all the birds got trapped in his web. And the hunter said, where will all they go? They all will come to me. I'll just go around. And he just left. He just left the birds over there and he went somewhere. <coughs> all the birds said, what to do now? So when Gurudev went away, he said, he said, chant this mantra. And if you are in trouble anywhere, just remember me. Just think about me and remember me. <coughs> All the birds say chant the mantra and he said, remember the Guru. That's what the Guru is instructed us. He said, what to do now? What was the mantra? He said, it was one year has passed by, I don't remember. And the other bird said, oh, I'll try and remember. The first line was, one day a hunter will come. And the second line, they were thinking of, and we are not remembering it, what happened. Oh. And they just tried to force them, one day hunter will come. And then he will offer some grain of rice. And the third one, third line, oh, we're not remembering it. Let's try and remember. Let's all remember it together. And said, oh, the third line was he will lay down a trap. And what was the fourth line? We don't remember what's the fourth line. And they just kept on thinking, thinking, thinking. And then they remember the fourth line was we should not be greedy and get trapped, but we all got greedy and we got trapped. Then what should we do now? And Gurudev said, Whenever you are in trouble, just remember about me and think about me. So, so all the birds. They all remembered and prayed to Gurudev by their heart. They said, what else to do? So, so let's move our wings. That's what they decided to do. And they chanted the mantra that one day hunter will come. He will offer some grain of rice. And he will lay down the trap. And we should not be greedy enough and get trapped in that his trap. So all the birds, then they move their wings. And all the birds, if, if they move their wings all together at the same time, what will happen? They all went up, they all, the web started to fly. The hunter came and he said, oh my god, what's happening? The web is up, how is it flying? It was a big river nearby. And, and the birds, they crossed the river and they all went. And the hunter said, how can I cross this river? It was a very wild river. The water was very fast and wild. Very strong current of waves are flowing in the river. The hunter saw, oh my god, my web has gone and the birds have gone. And the birds, they cross the river and they drop down there. With the web, they all fall down there. And, they went there. and all the birds, so the rice that they have stored in their throats, they all spit that out. And when they spit that rice out, there were a few rats near the river. You have seen this few rats, right? So this is so surprising. <coughs> and all the rats came outside and they started to bite the web and he cut the grape because they smelled the rice so they wanted to eat the rice so the rat they came out to eat the rice and they cut the web and when they cut out all the birds got free what is the moral of the story what is the essence what is the purpose i have explained the story to you what is the meaning that in your life when you don't follow your Guru, if we don't take mantras from Guru, if we don't chant the mantras from received from Guru, we will never be delivered from this material world. In scriptures, Quran, as Dev has explained, a person who don't take Diksha initiation, when they die, they have to go in the life of an animal. Lord said, I've given you human body, why? 
You should be get initiation with the pure devotee of the Lord and Guru. And unless you don't chant the Diksha Mantras, then getting delivered from the material world is far away. Next life, you will need to take birth as an animal. As an animal, you need to take birth as a dog. You should take birth as a cow, buffalo, lion. So that's why in human life, you should get initiation with the Guru. So that's what it's been saying here. One day hunter will come. In this material world, this Maya, we are suffering. It's the web of Maya. Where are we? We all are trapped and we are suffering in the web of Maya. What is this grain of rice? These are all the happiness that we seek in this world. The grain of rice, like drinking nice, eating nice, entertainment, wearing nice clothes, earning money. So we are trapped and we are lured by that. And we are attracted to that. So what is the way to get delivered, get out of that web? Get out of the web. <coughs> you chant the mantra. All you have to do is chant Harinam. All you have to do is chant the holy names. In this Kaliyu, chanting holy names is the only way. Only by chanting the holy names we can get delivered from this material world. In this Kali there is no other way to get progress. Only holy names is the way. Repeat after me. Hare Krishna. So this is the Ram Sankirtan chanting holy names of the Lord. And it's plain Padyavali Mahajan, we should also do Kirtan of him. So any person has written, we should not do Kirtan of that. It will be just entertainment. If you are doing Kirtan of any person written by lyrics, written by anyone, but people who have had realization, who are performing bhajan, when then they are writing the lyrics, those lyrics have a potency and power. That is known as Shabda Brahma. It's like these transcendental words, transcendental lyrics, transcendental sound. They produce a transcendental sound. In Hindi, she was speaking Shabda Brahma. And one is Shabda Saman. So one thing, a normal person is saying something and the same thing is same said by a pure devotee of the Lord depending on his realization. So the thing said by the pure devotee, it has an immense power. You, that power will go through your ears and it will directly touch your heart and it will cleanse your heart and destroy all your sins. So see, one katha, one story is spoken by a normal person, it won't have effect. And if a special person speaks the same same story, everyone will be affected by that. So you are here in the paper if you write that there is a flood here, a lot of people die. No one will read it. <coughs> but if Modi, the Prime Minister of India, if he reads a speech about that and he reads <coughs> in big words, everyone will see. He said, oh, the Prime Minister has said this thing. Everyone will be affected by that. And in the newspaper, it will be on the headline. And if you say that something, it won't be in the headline. And no one will read it. No one will even listen. 
No one will even listen to you. The words are the same. But the person who is saying it, it matters. What is the meaning? People don't value the words of normal person speaking. Nobody takes it seriously. But if a special person or a designated person is saying it, then they value it. He said, thousands of people die in the flood over here. So all the people will buy that newspaper, and then if you write, and if you write it, even if if there's headline, then people will not buy that newspaper. So it's like, oh, people have mouths; they say a lot. So what is the meaning? Similarly, our spiritual sound science says that normal people say. So if normal people is chanting Hare Krishna. So he's chanting this Maha Mantra. So this has no power. But a person who has deep bhajan and who performs spirituality and with the realization when they say chant this mantra, then it has immense potential and power. And when we listen to that Harikata, it enters through our ears and it will go into the heart and it will destroy all the sins in your heart and it will cleanse your heart, make it soft. So with the bhajan, spiritual practice, we should listen to Harinam from the pure devotee of the Lord. A person does not perform bhajan. So there's a chance that we have like a reverse fruits of it. In Padma Purana it is explained who written Padma Purana. Yes, they have written the Padma Purana. Like he written Bhagavad. In Padma Purana, he is writing like a Vaishnav person who is not Vaishnav, who does not do bhajan, who don't chant the mantras of Vishnu. Who is the meaning of Vaishnav? Or those who are chanting the names of Vishnu. But that person is known as Vaishnav. Those who have taken Diksha Mantra, the, the rules of Vishnu Mantra, they are known as Vaishnav. So with the pure devotee of the Lord who has received, we should all take Diksha Mantra from the Guru, from the pure devotee of the Lord. Until and unless we have Vishnu Mantra, we are not Vaishnav. Even if you are putting Tilak, you are putting Tulsi Mala, then you are having bead bag. But you don't have Diksha Mantra, you are not taking Mantra from the Guru, Vishnu Mantra, you are not a Vaishnav. And when a person is not Vaishnav, they are doing Kirtan, then Shabda Brahma is not coming. It's not spiritual sound, then it's material sound. There are two types of sound, like Shabda Samanya, like a normal word, like a material sound, materialistic vibration, normal sound. And when it's Shabda Brahma, it's coming from the mouth of pure devotee of the Lord, and it has the energy of the deep realizations and bhajan. And if we listen to that Naam and Harikata mantra, and we listen to that from the mouth of the pure devotee of the Lord, it enters, it has so much power. It reaches our heart straight away. It first of all, it destroys all the sin. So that day I was explaining the Harikata of Ajamil. And what did Ajamil name this child? How many child did he have? Ten children. So he was living with the Vaishya and he had a son and the tenth child of Jami. And what was the name of nine children? In scriptures, 
the other nine children, they are not related to the Lord. So in scriptures, it is not written. So maybe he had might be hakko bakko chakko tintu shinti pintu titu shitu pintu like you people keep hearing means. So it's the Ajamil, this little child, this, he named him Narayan. Why did he name him Narayan? This is also a deep truth behind it. In reality, Ajamil did not name his child Narayan. In Puran, there is a story about this. And actually, first Lomos Rishi, he was very, very my saint Lomas Rishi. He was wandering and one day he reached the forest. And in that forest, the Ajamil used to live with that, bash, the, that woman over there. And the Lomas Rishi, it was evening and they didn't know it was like a small hut. And Roma Sushi just put down his blanket over there and he started to do bhajan. In the morning, in the morning, the Lord blessed and Ajamil, Ajamil's wife gave birth to a child in the forest. And in the morning, what did they see? And that saint is sitting in front of their hut. So women have their nature when they see a purity body of the Lord, they see oh this person should bless my child. It's like just a one day old, one day old child. So she was see, wanted to seek the blessings of the saint and the saint said, Okay, I will bless him, I give Swasti Vachan and then I will give him a name. And then Lomas Rishi, Lomas Rishi named that child Narayan. So that's Namkaran Sanskar, the ceremony of giving a name. So if you put put if you name your child yourself and if if you compare that to if a sadhu is giving the name to a child, then it they also give their power in that name and it has like thousand times more fruit. If you put even if you put the name Ram yourself, if you put the name Krishna yourself, but if that same name is coming from the, is being done under the guidance of a sadhu then it has different fruit. They said, okay, I'll put the name of my child Narayan. I'll put the name of Krishna. So, name doesn't matter. If the saint, pure devotee of the Lord is giving that name, then it has a different effect. It is so different. So, Ajamil, Lomas so what did Loma Sushi do? Loma Sushi named that child Narayan. And at that time Ajamil wasn't there. He went to steal something. He went there. He used to drink alcohol. He used to drink a lot of alcohol. And it was the universe's arrangement that he was very angry. He came, he was very angry and he was high on alcohol and he had sickle. Sickle. He had a sickle in his hand, axe, axe in his hand, a kuladi axe. He had an axe in his hand, he was high on alcohol. And Ajamil saw that, oh, there is a sadhu in their house. Ajamil got very angry and like, eyes were right, oh, a purity what is in my house. So I'll tell you one thing. If we are, so a Hindu who is like Muslim, they eat more cow. So, mu so a Muslim people, they might eat some cow or not, but a Hindu who is changing their religion and becoming Muslim, they eat a lot of cow. So Ajami was a Brahman, he did not take alcohol, he didn't take meat, but now his character got spoiled. And he started drinking a lot, lots of alcohol, and he started to eat meat. So that's why you like committing sins over and over again, the the growth falls. It goes down, and the person commits more sin. 
So what did Ajamil see? Oh, a sadhu is pure devotee of Lord is in my house. In my hut, there's a pure devotee of the Lord. So he he lifted his axe up and he started, he wanted to hit Rishi, no, no much Rishi with him. They don't want to see sadhu. There are some people, they're so much sinner. They got angry like a buffalo. And you see a buffalo. They're like, hmm, hmm. They make sound like that. They don't like to see pure devotee of the Lord. That time, Ajamil's wife. She said, I gave birth to this child last night. Ajamil saw the new child and his heart became a bit soft. He's like, why is this sadhu is here? <coughs> and this sadhu didn't come outside. He was just sleeping outside the hut. Loma Sushi was wandering and randomly he just slept there. And he said, see, and this is my new child. And Ajamil said, wow, very nice, beautiful child. That little child was very beautiful. This pure devotee of the Lord, he has given the name to this child. He said, what name did he give? Ajamil was the Narayan. Ajamil couldn't say it. He, his wife is saying, my child has been named Narayan. And Ajamil tried it tens and hundreds of times, but he still couldn't say Narayan. So that's why I did a shlok. Lord himself is saying, hey Arjun, even for hundred births, hundred lifetimes, who have, who have done Vigra Seva of Thakurji, only they have the right to hold the beat back and chant the holy names. They won't be able to say the name Ram. You won't be able to say Ram, you will say Am, which means mango. Ram, Am. So we don't take the name of the husband here in India? No. We should not take the name of the husband. And what do they call? They say Am. They call their husband Am. Say Ram. You should say Ram. <laughs> and there's a like Kanaya ka papa. So, for example, if the child is named Kanaya, so they say, Oh, Kane oh Kanaya's father, come here. They don't take the name directly. They say, Oh, father of Kanaya, come here. If you don't have a child, then what, then what do you guys say? How do you call it? He's like, hey, please listen. Hey. He's like, Sunte Ho, are you listening? Hanji, yes. They don't take the name. They say, yes. Hey, did you listen? They don't take the name of their husband. In truly, like today, everyone is following Western culture, so everyone is taking names directly. So our mother, my mother, didn't take the name of my father. But slowly, the things are modernizing. And so it's like there was a curtain and now there's no curtain. So even in the elder brother of the husband, they don't even used to talk to them. It's like you should not talk to the elder brother of your husband in Narena. You guys remember? And they were doing something in Narela and chant the mantra. Like Swasti Vachan was happening. He said, I, I put my sari on my face in front of the jade. Ghungat is like covering your face with sari. People don't even wear sari these days. <coughs> slowly and slowly, the Indian culture is walking towards Western culture. 
and our Indian culture and Sanskriti is being destroyed day by day. The women are wearing short clothes and they say to them, oh, she's modern and this is the society and all the bad things that are happening in this world. What is the reason? So, men are wearing big clothes, full clothes, and women, they're wearing short clothes, extremely short clothes, and they're, and they call it civilized, it's civilized to wear short clothes, like we're modern, modern. What happens? The desire of lust increases in everyone, automatically, and all the things that are happening, rape, and the essence is this. This is the reason. So, Prajwasis, they put Gungat. They used to cover their head with the sari. In TV today, we see. We go to Western country, we see. And the more and more worse it is, they call it civilized and modern. What to say? Once I go to. I went to a country someday. The airport, everyone's there to welcome me. And one woman, she she was, she had a torn jeans, like she had a pant, and she had like a torn jeans. It was torn on the, torn on the thighs. I thought she must be very poor because she is wearing torn clothes. All of them were wearing very nice clothes, but she was wearing a torn clothes. She's a poor girl. So I thought she's a poor girl. All my devotees are wearing very nice clothes, and that one girl, her jeans was torn. I didn't focus much. I said, "Oh, she must be from a poor family." I'm like, okay, no problem. And then I saw. I went to the house, she was offering Arthi and lamps to Thakurji in that same clothes. Like in the torn jeans, like rug jeans. It's like, it's not holes, there are holes. But it's like pure rug jeans, like torn jeans. So after the Arthi, I asked again, like, oh, who is this girl? And he said, this is the daughter of your disciple. And I was like, oh... His wife she wearing clothes like this. This is this is the most expensive cloth in her wardrobe. This is a good cloth. They say call it designer fashion. This is modern. Okay, is this hippie logs used to do that? This is not civilized. So, it should be like follow culture properly. So, does the Prime Minister go like this? Does, in, does anyone go in the parliament like this? But what do we do? We think it's civilized to be like that. And it's okay. But what happens with that? The whole society is being polluted and walking towards the wrong direction. So, it doesn't matter if it's men or women. They're not Sukhdev Goswami. They're not like Sukhdev Goswami. So if you're walking almost half nude around the world and the lust will increase around, whose fault is it? This is a complete social failure. The society should take measures for this. This is not right. In reality, it's true or not? You tell me. If you tell your child, it's like, oh, you are orthodox, we saw TV, we are more than you are orthodox. But this is not my point. This is not the Vedic culture. We should understand our in culture and then implement it. We should take our culture and embed it in our hearts. We should study Ramayana. Bhan Ramchandra displayed very good examples for all the society. And if I say Katha to this, and they will say, Maharaj, you are speaking nonsense. These are all orthodox thoughts. We saw you see in TV, 
the more the night the less of the clothes the, the more it's better so like more advanced more civilized it is to wear short clothes but no we all are absorbed in western culture and you go to western western world and see the the western people sitting here they are dressed very nicely here the non devotee people they also ask they are like you can go to the beach and you can see how they all are seen sitting there how they all are taking the sunlight you can see so everyone is like fully out of consciousness and laying down on the beach and in indian culture so if someone walks like that around your house if someone love walks like that around in gujarat everyone will follow that woman like a dog everyone will run after her so if you're wearing very very short clothes like a bikini everyone all the dogs will start walking behind that woman who is the dog here all your wom- all all the young boys they will keep staring her they will run behind her whose fault is it this is i'm not blaming anyone specifically this is the complete social failure and everyone is responsible for it. we all should wear nice clothes and i think i feel government should take action for this yogi implemented the rule once but but everyone revolted against the rule i saw in delhi mat nearby there were youth foundation youth organizations they all were revolting against that they said no this is not right so it's like romeo and juliet wherever they say there was a rule they couldn't implement that rule and that whole youth or youth organization they do vote and they pray. but but if we go against the youth then we won't get the vote so politicians neglected their decision in tv there's full explanation you can see if like girlfriend and boyfriend are going to the park the police catch them and they catch them okay i'll call your parents and so everyone they see the police and they run away <laughs> i see there's a fountain park in front of janakpuri there are a lot of couples walking there whenever the police comes all of them disappear as soon as the police come run away and so then they started revolting it it's like oh this is not fine the police are abusing us okay that's what i'm saying here is we should understand the indian culture properly and then implement it only then we can enter spiritual life that's what my point is otherwise everything will get polluted and this, then it's not society all our family and the whole society will end up in a complete failure so who's what who's follows it we should understand the culture and implement it properly it's like your mindset is not right it's like okay you are walking nude so it's your problem so shall we close our eyes and walk or everyone is sukhdev goswami bad it's like mukta mahapurush dhar maha maha bhagavat so are they like that they don't notice anything so they see everything and this whole society gets polluted so in ramayan in mahabharat ved puran ved puran upanishad they put these thoughts and opinions forward this this whole is true so i'm saying this because so jamil's wife said that the name of the child is narayan Rami doesn't listen to it. Because Rami couldn't say it. So the same name, she said, the saint named my child Narayan. 
Jamil is not listening to it properly. When Romans Rishi said, your child's name is Narayan. And then it went inside the Jamil's ear. And then a Jamil said, Narayan. The first time, a Jamil, he said the name of a Jam, uh, name Narayan. And at that time, all his things got destroyed. This is the power of the holy names. So when you hear the name from the mouth of the pure devotee of the Lord, it is spiritual sound, Shaktabham. It has a lot of potency. Her wife said, My child has been named Narayan. But Ajami wasn't able to say Narayan. But when Lomas Rishi said, I have named your child Narayan, then he was able to say Narayan. This is the glorification of the holy name. So whatever you listen from the mouth of the pure devotee of the Lord, we all get Namabhas. We have realization of the Nam. So what's the first thing that happens with Nam was all the sins can destroy it. And when we keep chanting the holy names again and again, so Jamil kept chanting the name of Narayan over and over again. He was just calling his son, Hey Narayan, come here. Narayan, come sit here. Narayan, have some water. Like you have the name of your child. What's your name of your child? What's the name of your daughter? Fala. Fiona. Fiona. Fiona is the name of her daughter. Put some names like Radha, Govinda, Sham, Sundar, Vanmohan. These are the good names. You all get Namabhas with that. So Ajami was chanting the name of Narayan. He collected Sukritis. He was just calling his son. So the first, all the sins get destroyed. And when you chant the names over and over again, what happens? Our Sukritis get collected. They increase. This is the glorification of the holy names. So Jamil collected a lot of Sukritis and what happened due to his pious activities and Sukritis? He had the darshan of servants of Vishnu. When he was about to die, he was passing stool and urine and no one was near him. And at that time, three people from hell came to take him, to take his soul and take it to hell. And Jamil got scared. He saw Yamdut and got scared. And he started to call his little child, he said, Narayan, Narayan, Narayan. And at that time, Vishnu, the servants of Vishnu, they came. They, they, the four servants of Vishnu, they came and they kicked out the messengers of hell. And they had a conversation. The conversation that happened between the Vishnu Dut and Yamdut is known as Sadhu Sangam. It's known as association of the pure devotee. The Vishnu Dut said, Ajamil is listening. He said, Hey, idiot, you cannot take Ajamil. Because Ajamil, he has chanted the name of Narayan. So, you, so the Yamdut say, He's just calling his child. He's not thinking about the Lord. Vishnu Dut said, Okay, you tell me. So Vishnu is named as Narayan. So the first Vishnu was named Narayan, or first the child was named Narayan. So who was the first? So Vishnu's original name is Narayan. It was the first. So, so what's your name? Brajanandan. This name, this is the name of the Lord first, nor is it your name first. And you got that name. And you're Vrajindranandan Das, you're servant of Vrajindranandan. But people say Vrajindranandan, okay. The Lord's name is transcendental. Anyhow, you take the name of the Lord. 
even if you're like joking or criticizing anyhow anyhow you chant the name it have an effect anyhow you take the name of the lord all your sins will get destroyed so ajami listen to this conversation between and this is known as the association of the pure devotee so ajami was just listening you all are sitting here and listening so similarly ajami was listening he was listening the glories of the holy name and at that time yamdut went away and vishnu dut went away ajami was thinking was thinking i just called my child and lord vishnu he came he came to protect me he sent four servants to protect me but if i had practiced spiritual life properly what would have been the fruits of that so what is the result of being a association of sadhana do you have a desire to become detached from this material world and do renunciation to bhakti and viragya they both come when you're doing satsang association of pure devotee of love two things come one thing knowledge and second thing renunciation renunciation so knowledge and renunciation they both come together what is the result what is the fruit do you get from sadhu sang you get gyan viragya knowledge and renunciation these are not the limbs of bhakti they manifest when bhakti is growing in your heart how does bhakti how does bhakti occur with when you are doing association of sadhu the more association of the sadhu you do the more bhakti you will get and the more bhakti you get these two things will manifest automatically the two known as two children of bhakti two children of bhakti and knowledge and renunciation gyan and viragya bhakti dev is saying that i was born in dravid utpandra i went uh, was born around tamil and slowly and slowly i came to mysore i grew up in mysore and after that i came to gujarat gurjar desh is written in scriptures so it's gujarat gurjar desh is known as gujarat gurjar desh in scriptures so i came here i was so tired i, I was so surprised i saw i was old and my both of children they were young so bhakti devi she became old and her children they became young this is natural mother grows old but the son is young but the thing that surprising here is i took my children and went to vrindavan and some it have opposite have the reverse happened both of my children they became old and i became young in vrindavan this is so surprising for me how did i become so young and both of my young children they became old how is that possible and they their both of their bodies became weak and i was crying so this katha is very sad but radrishi nadrishi said okay i'll the story is very long so nadrishi went to chat he went to saint this is the glorification of vrindavan who do bhajan in vrindavan bhakti devi blesses them and knowledge and renunciation they both diminish they both become old they go away diminish you cannot attain the lord with knowledge and renunciation what does knowledge and renunciation they're only assisting factors of bhakti they don't they cannot attain lord with that there are big people who have lots of knowledge but they don't do anything 
there was a person who was speaking Bhagavat. And he was speaking the glorification of Ekadashi. But on Ekadashi, we should not take Atta, Roti, Puri. We should do Nirjala Ekadashi. If possible, don't take any water. So that they, he said, Ekadashi, take grain on the day of Ekadashi, they go to hell because they are taking bad food. So, so he spoke the glorification of Ekadashi and, and that pundit, the Bhagavad Katha ended and he came to his house and he saw his wife didn't cook anything. And then the Panditji said, Oh, you haven't cooked anything. And he said, in, in your Katha, you just said, we should not even take water, and if our body is good, then we should not even drink water. And he said, Husband, your body is very nice and strong. So I thought you were on Nirjula fast. So I didn't cook anything for you. And the Panditji said, No. Why did did you go to the Katha? This Katha was not for you. This was for everyone else. I will take Puri. I will eat everything. This is just to tell, speak in front of people. So if you're listening to such person, then there's no benefit at all. It's complete waste. That's why Mahaprabhu says, like you should implement the behavior and you should change your behavior and then you should proceed in spiritual life. So you should wake up early in the morning, chant holy names, wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and chant holy names. Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare so if, if not 3 o'clock possible, then at least wake up at 4 o'clock. And he's saying 4.30. Like he sleeps late. He don't want to wake up. So I'm not considering anyone's work here. So at least I'm saying generally everyone should wake up in the early morning and chant the names of the Lord. What should you do in the morning? You all should chant the names of the Lord. You don't have to do anything else. Chant the holy names. Your body will be healthy. You will feel bliss. And you will also have darshan of the Lord. This is the glories of the holy name. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Very beautiful. Early in the early morning in Bhavarama Maurat, one hour thirty six minutes before sunrise, you get up. So if you chant the holy names the full day, and if you chant the holy names in Brahma Maurat, the fruits of that is ten times more. So when should you chant the holy names? Early morning in Brahma Maurat. So before get taking a bath, before getting fresh, you chant holy names, you can chant holy names in any situation. You sit down, you sleep, you're walking, anyhow, just chant the holy names. You will feel blissful. You will enjoy it. You'll feel blissful. In Kali Yuga, there's no other way, and you don't have to do anything. You just have to take Harina, Milina, Mevi, Kevlam. Wake up early in the morning and chant the holy names. The more you chant the holy names, Nam Prabhu will manifest everything in your heart and you automatically will get some knowledge and renunciation. Automatically you will learn the Shastras. Renunciation you will become detached from this world automatically. So what will you do? Chant the holy names. You all will feel blissful. Gurudev Narayana Swami Maharaj used to explain his biography and said, 
One day Gurudev was saying himself, listen carefully. I, since my childhood, I used to chant 64 rounds of mala. How many rounds have you been chanting? You don't even chant. Okay. So Gurudev said, I used, since my childhood, I used to chant 64 rounds of Hari Mala. 64. Equal to 100,000 Harinam. If that's not completed, I wouldn't even drink water. We saw in Gurudev in Mat also. This is true. He used to wake up at 3 o'clock and chant holy names. So Gurudev said, like, I was a police officer. I was a police superintendent, and Narayana Swami Maharaj was a police superintendent. And it was the British Empire, and there were very strict rules at that time. So you can say, I couldn't come today, it's not like this. It's very strict, you have to be there. You have to pay fine if you take a leave from your work. And if two to four days, then they fire you from the workplace. The Britishers had very, very strict rules. But today, these days, it's a bit lenient. And they're like, everything is taken by technology, so they just take attendance by fingerprint. Fingerprint sensors on the door. So before, they were used to keep registers, but now everything is computerized. So they put the code on chair. So in the office, they leave their coat and then go. They put their coat at 10 on the chair and then they go out and they come back at 4 and take their coat back. And whoever comes, their servant says, Oh, the boss is outside. He's about to come. With the British government. <laughs> So the British government, in reality, it improved the country, India, in a way. In reality, if you see it, British government was not blessed or not bad. All the railways, they have been developed by British government. <laughs> it is beautiful. So I'm not going to this topic. So the Guru they was saying he was a police superintendent. He was police superintendent at that time, and at three o'clock I was chanting holy names, and at eight o'clock I had to go to office. And I saw that day it was nine o'clock, and my hari names were left in routine. I thought, okay, I'll chant, and it, I was chanting, and ten o'clock happened. And it was like Kadesh on that day. He said, I'll just do more names. And he just kept on doing 11 o'clock. Time was 11 o'clock now. And how do I go to office now? 11 o'clock is too late. So he didn't go to office that day. <coughs> he took a medical leave or something like that. He didn't worry. The next day, I went to the office. I saw in the office, I saw there was signature done on my attendance. I asked, I asked the person who was maintaining the attendance register, I said, I didn't come yesterday, how come my attendance is there? And he said, no, you came yesterday. This is your signature, you signed it in front of me. Buddha said it's exactly like the signature of the person. I didn't come yesterday. Guru Dev Tyagi, 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 you came yesterday. You did signature in front of my eyes, I saw. Guru Dev said, no, this is not possible. I didn't come. You came here and you talked to everyone in the office. You communicated with everyone in the office. And the Guru Dev was so surprised. And he was like, shocked. And what happened? Guru Dev's signature was there in the register. And he's saying, I met this person yesterday, this person yesterday in the office. I met everyone in the office yesterday. And all the people in the office said, yes, you came yesterday. What is the meaning? Lord himself. 
people were chanting holy names, Gurudev was chanting holy names, and Lord Himself, He did the duty of the of Gurudev. The Lord did it Himself. Gurudev said Himself. First, He didn't believe. Like, how is it possible? And the officer said, yes, you came and we did this work, we did this work yesterday with you. And the Gurudev said, till then, I just started to worry about one thing, that there is a slope of Gita, person who is Ananya, who is like completely surrendered to me, I protect what they have and what they don't have, I, I bring it to them, I put it on my head and I bring it to my devotee. This is the glories of the Holy Name. Ananya, everyone should be Ananya. Are you guys listening or not? Haribo. Like I will go soon. You will live here, I will go. So listen. Listen some glories of my Gurudev and listen some glories of the Harinam. We got such Guru and got association of such a good Guru. God Himself. He came in form of Gurudev and He did His work duty at the police, police department. See. This is like very beautiful Guru, very dignified Guru. Like this, I can't even glorify him. He's so top. Gurudev said, after that, what did I do? I thought in my heart that I should give up everything. I should go and chant to bhajan alone. So, the name of the saint, Narottan Brahmachari. And he came near the village and he listened to Harikatha from them and he listened about Navdeep. What did Gurudev do? Like, I will give up my job of police and I will go to Navdeep. And went to Navdeep and he met Bhakti Pravan Kesha Goswami Maharaj and he surrendered himself to his lotus feet. I, he had two children, he had two children and one child, they both were daughters, one was two, three year old, another one was even like three to four months old. He gave up his family and he went to Navdi and he started to serve his Guru. So see, this is the Mahan Guru, the like very amazing Guru, very nice Guru. This is like very bona fide Gurus. We are listening from mouth of such bona fide Guru where life is successful. If you don't do bhajan, then if you have Guru, but still you are not taking mantras and you are not chanting them, then you won't get the fruits even if you have a bona fide Guru. So Tulsi Das Ji is saying, like Bas is like bamboo. What's near the bamboo? It rains. But does bamboo give any flower or any fruits? No. But a foolish person, they get bona fide guru in Ram Charitramanas Tulsi Das has written. Even after getting a bona fide guru, they, don't, they take mantra in Dikshu, they don't have faith in guru. Even after taking mantras, they don't chant mantras, they don't have any any benefit, everything is pointless. So, Shraddha and Guru is very important. So, they had two disciples, Madhavendra Puripad, Ishwar Puripad and Puripad. They both took Diksha mantras. Ishwar Puripad, he was Mahabhagavat and he became Guru of Shaitanya Mahaprabhu, Ishwar Puripad. And Madhavendra Puripad, he, in, he gave all his wealth of love to Ishwar Puripad and he transferred it to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
and mother in the second disciple ram chandra prabhu and he he was used to criticize his guru he used to criticize his guru and that why in scriptures it's written guru ninda is the worst thing to do a person who's doing criticizing guru we should not see the face of such a person if you see the state of face of such person whatever sukriti whatever good deed pious activities you have they all will like be destroyed so we should never we should never do criticize guru and we should never listen to a person who is criticizing guru and we should never see the face of person who is criticizing guru bhakti will happen in one lifetime but people who are criticizing guru what is the most dangerous thing in this world like offending <coughs> or committing sin in the lotus feet of the guru we should all stay away from such a person no prem nand hari hari bol hari bol These are the two most important things and I do this everywhere I go. I did this in Brazil in every country I go. And it's like very beautiful event. Huh? I'll try and do this in America as well. Brazil. Tajai. In Tajai, in Brazil. In Tajai, I'll try and do it in Tajai in Brazil. So doing Rath Yatra is very nice. In Vasant Pachmi's first day. Before. One day before. One day before Vasant Pachmi. What is when is the Vyas Puja of Guru Dev? It's like on 21st. The twenty first is Saturday and twenty second Sunday. So twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, like five days. In January. So from twenty second in Brazil, Brazil in Brazil. We will celebrate Vyas Puja there. 
January is very nice, beautiful in Brazil. So, for, previously I did in Rio and, and June, July I did in Sao Paulo. So here we will do Rathyatra once in Bhuj. We will do Rathyatra sometime. Doing Rathyatra is very auspicious. Really don't know. Swami Maharaj, wherever he did preaching, he did Rathyatra. Doing Rathyatra is very auspicious. So we'll do Rathyatra in Bhut sometime. So everyone should stay there at their own place and preach. And give out flyers and preach. Otherwise, how will people become aware? Marketing is very important. So it's like four years, four years plant in Gujarat that I have planted. It's four years old. Huh? The plant that is planted in Gujarat. Radha Kanti Didi says, no one comes here. It's just four year old tree. People will start to come. In Brazil, I am planting and gardening this plant for around like 20 to 25 years. This Krishna Balram sitting in front of you, he was like a very little child. So around 20 to 25 years. So I have been in Brazil for like 25 years. It's like 25 year old tree in Brazil. And Radha Gandhi is saying no one is coming in Bhuj. It's a four year old tree. It's true or not? It will grow slowly and slowly. But no one wants to make the efforts, they just want the fruits. It's true or not? Everything takes time. <coughs> Radha Gandhi says no one comes in Bhuj. This is just three to four year old plant right now. She wants fruits in, in a little tree from little plant. <laughs> so stay invested in a place and then the fruits will come. And all every time. I cooked. I cooked for everyone and all the devotees finished it. I just went to take a bath and devotees finished. The food they didn't leave anything for me. They didn't leave anything for me to eat. I'm, I cooked. I made for them. They all finished it. They didn't leave anything for me. So uh, the people who are sitting here, they were not at that time. These people were not there at that time. They were not even born when I was in Brazil. So in Gujarat there's a story.